welcome our next Ted Light Talk speaker. Good morning. I'm hoping that you had your coffee and you are full on energetic. So it's been incredible three days that we had in New York India and we have been talking about so many things in, along the three days and we were talking about design thinking, we were talking about AI taking over our jobs and we there are a lot of talks that are also focused on generative AI but there is one untapped segment that people are not talking about. Even though generative AI is something that people are writing using on a regular basis, are we doing, using it efficiently? So are we uh, doing, getting the best out of generative AI or any writing platform in that matter? So we are going to talk about AI as writing assistance today. So and this presentation tries to cover some basic concepts of uh, writing, AI writing, and also to the end, I'll be covering how we can uh, make the content that you have generated through AI or something you have written more fluent, more quality based content. So this is me, so I'm a writer and I'm a procrastinator. So I think every one of us are procrastinators here, so we don't think, we don't do things on time. We are always procrastinating things throughout our life. So it could be something in the personal or something in the professional life. So if you are asked to write something or like coming from your childhood, so if you are given a, a task to complete an assignment today, so you won't be finishing it today, but you will wait for the deadline to come up and then you start finishing it. So that's what happens with me as well. But what is procrastination exactly? So for the people who don't know, procrastination is a uh, way that you convince yourself to do something tomorrow which should have been done yesterday. So that's what we've been doing all our lives and it's something we don't agree but we end up doing it no matter what. And here's an example of like how it normally uh, works for me. So every task that I get, so consider I'm a designer also. So I design uh, and I document everything that I uh, work with. So if there is a design build document that was asked to uh, create and I would not do anything until the deadline is approaching here. So I will see if the target is in the not and I am going to do a lot of time pass here and then I am going to end up looking for the <laughs> timeline and I am going to be stressed at that point in time. So there could be many reasons for that to happen, right? So it could be abstract goals where you don't know exactly like what exactly has to be done or task conversion that you don't like what you are being assigned, as, assigned to. And if you are a perfectionist and you want to un uh, do everything perfectly, and you are not confident enough that uh, whatever you have at that point in time is not good enough. So you keep procrastinating it so that uh, in a, in a uh, illusion that you might get something good out of it at a later point in time. And also it depends on the environment that you are working in and the low motivation and the overwhelming nature of like, the content or the task that you are given. And all over it you have the fear whether you are, not, you are going to make it or not. So these are multiple reasons where we try to procrastinate and I myself consider that procrastinators are the real innovators. The reason, so we know the diamonds are created under intense pressure. So what are the diamonds that we see on a daily basis in our shops, rings and everything? So these are not something that are readily available out of the ground. So they were in a very raw format and they were polished, put under a lot of pressure. That's how the diamonds are made. And just like the procrastinators are also under immense pressure when they are closing to that deadline. So that's where they try to become more innovative and try to so, uh, find some innovative ideas so that they can do the longest of the work in a very short time and deliver it in a qualitative manner. And that gives me, uh, that gives me the segue to the topic today. Ink meets innovation, unleashing the power of writing uh, using AI. Myself, Avinash, so I'm working at Quillboard as a UX designer. I've been working uh, almost seven plus years uh, as a UX designer and almost from three plus years, I've been working primarily on the education space and the writing space. So that's made me think of, I have some decent amount of knowledge that I've been gained over the period of time in the writing space that I think I can share with everyone here. 
But what is writing as a way of life? So everyone writes, right? There are many people who write. So some write articles, some write documentation, some write novels, stories, movies, everything. Everything is, starts from writing. So writing is not just putting words on a page. Writing is more about expressing yourself, expressing your thoughts, expressing your ideas. So you communicate with writing, you communicate with words. That's what we do throughout our life. So even if it is orally we are talking, but somehow down there we are feeling the words in our brain. So that's how you are writing inside your brain as well. That's how you express yourself. It's not just me, right? So there are many other people who are writers and also procrastinators. So it's not just like you are writing a document in a corporate setup, so you wanted to finish it off and you want your manager to be convinced and all that. So you are not working only for that. There are a lot of other things in your personal life that you are also tackling. Similarly, so it's the same situation for everyone across the uh, writing space. So there could be a lot of different types of uh, writers in different verticals that are also struggling in the same space. So there are designers like me who are trying to document their documentation and having a struggle doing it and novelists trying to write their uh, new novel and trying to uh, find a plot twist or something like that and they are not getting it and they are procrastinating it to complete the novel and tech bloggers trying to write something for their new uh, technology blog and many other like that. But me being me, I want to innovate uh, and find solutions that can make, get my done, work done faster. So I have gone through the internet and I have found a like, lot of AI tools. Like in the recent times, even though a lot of them are based out of ChatGPT, but we end up using them because of their unique use cases. And similarly, like I have found ChatGPT, Gemini, Language Tool, Quillboard, Sudorite, Grammarly. There are a lot of other tools which help me with different use cases. I think this brings me to a segue uh, of uh, talking more about AI. So this is some uh, news or an, uh, Twitter post that I found on the internet uh, where this lady was talking saying that I want AI to do my laundry and dishes so that I can do the art and writing but not the otherwise. And she's right. She's talking AI in general but what exactly she mean? So there are two types of AIs. Two types of AIs that people talk. So there are AI in general, like just like in the other example, so she was talking AI in general, she want AI to do the laundry. But she's not talking about ChatGPT to do my laundry. So it's a different case. So every time we talk about AI, it is basically we are talking about a specific use case based AI. So example, AI for writing is a use case. So an AI for uh, culling the photos uh, from a new photograph decision is a, a, something done by AI. And if you have some Netflix recommendations uh, saying that, hey, this is based on your recent uh, viewing, uh, that's something that AI is working for you. So all of them work in a different fashion. None of them are same. They work with different data sets. So since we're talking about AI for writing, let me just give you a quick highlight of what's happening in the uh, head of an AI that is designed for writing. So I'm going to keep it very simple because it is like too much technical terms, but Consider it more like, more like AI is going to a school. So when it is going to the school for the first time, it is fed with a lot of information, so it has a lot of uh, data that it has to process. But what makes it easy is, so the engineer, or let's say teacher, he, who gives the information to the AI in a very structured format so that it can consume effectively. So that's what is happening in the data pre-processing. And then we have AI model training. This is where AI tries to understand and frame things by itself. Example, how words are being assigned with each other, how the uh, combination of works are being created. Like, it tries to understand the patterns. So then it tries to identify the patterns. So when patterns I mean, so if AI sees a word called sunlight, it tries to map, create a mind map of it around it saying that, hey, like sunlight can be mapped to uh, bright, it can be mapped to sun, it can be mapped to moon, astronomy and everything. It tries to map these things out so that it can uh, generate some good reliable content when it is given under any task and that's when the probabilistic data generation happens so when given a task or when asked a question so AI tries to do this combination of information that it has and generate a content but as we all know AI is not as perfect as it should be so it processes all that information and gives some output but it is up to us as it uh, designer or engineer or the consumer of the AI content to evaluate whether it is the right output or not and give the feedback. That's how iteratively 
it start uh, understanding the user needs and understand the formation of its uh, output structure. And even under the AI writing, so it is not just ChatGPT or Gemini that we've been looking at. So there are two ways that AI for writing can work. One is AI writer and the other one is AI assistant. So all the AI writers and AI assistants, so they work with, they come with different characteristics. So I'm gonna just list down a few characteristics that I think are the topmost and it will be easy uh, for everyone to consume as well. So when I say AI writers and AI assistants, AI writers are something that generates content on your behalf. That is automation. So any chatbot, you interact with it and type something and ask a question and you get an answer. So that means it, re it is generating content for you. But whereas writing assistants are different, they work in the augmentation segment. So what is augmentation? You write your own content and you want someone else to help it. Example, I myself write some content or probably draft an article and I ask one of my friends to review it. And that's what I want AI to be doing. So that's what augmentation does. It helps me define my content in a better way so that I sound professional, I sound more uh, qualitative content person across the platforms. So this is what the primary thing that we can understand from AI writers versus AI uh, assistants. And then we have manual research versus AI powered research. So in general, whenever we are trying to generate um, uh, try to find resources for our thesis or any research study that we are planning to do. So we normally used to do a manual research where you've been searching all of the internet from different platforms, different websites, going through and search and save a lot of time and gather some reliable resources and continue working on it, on your thesis. And then we have predictive text and creative assistance. When I say predictive text, it's more about predicting the next couple words. Example, when you are writing a message to your friend and probably like open your Gmail and say like, hi, then it automatically suggests that, how are you? You can just hit a tab and it will populate it. So that's a predictive text. So predictive text is based on a lot of data that all the entire uh, all the world, so people are using it in a similar fashion. I tries to understand the data and then uh, suggest the same data to the users from there onwards. But whereas creative assistance is completely different. So if you are writing a novel or an article and you have this writer's block, you don't know what to write afterwards. You have this very moment where you think like you got everything but you don't think of anything. It's more like a brain freeze. So how do you tackle that? That's where we need a creative assistance. So you want an AI to help you read your content and say that, hey, like based on your plot, like these are the different uh, ways you can continue the conversation or the story. So that's how it will speed, speed up your problem, uh, I mean, help you with the problem of procrastination and helps you continue writing. And then you have mass production versus personalization. When I say mass production, so there are times in a corporate setting mainly, so if you are under the marketing team and you are asked to write too many blogs, articles for your SEO purposes and for the traffic purposes, so you are saying given like one week time and you are asked to write like 15 articles, what you do, you just go to ChatGPT or Bard or uh, Gemini and try to do the prompt and generate the content, just make some tweaks and just get it through. And it works normally, right, because it is basically the SEO purposes. You just need content to surface on, your, uh, on the internet. But whereas personalization is different. Personalization is something you are targeting to one specific person or one specific set of audience. So let's say I'm writing an emailer, which is very much targeted to one specific person to communicate one specific information. I want this to be personalized and say that, hey Avinash, you have got an email, like based on your subscription details, this is what we're gonna think that you like, and these are some articles that you can read. So that's a very personal, uh, personalized experience that I'm gonna have in that cases. So that is not there throughout the time. And also I remember uh, looking at some platforms who does this personalization uh, as part of their suite of tools. So what they used to do, so they ask you as a brand, what do you do? So, and they ask you for what is your tone and the voice of your brand, and they ask you for the sample copy, and they put it uh, through the AI, and then AI learns from the way that content is written and try to generate content for you in a very similar fashion from there onwards. That way, even though it is generated by AI, AI makes sure that your content is very much aligned to your brand's tone and voice. And then you have speed and accuracy as self-explained here. So AI gives you 
ChatGPT or generative AI gives you a lot of speed in terms of getting things done, but how accurate it is. That is something for us to rely on. So you have to validate your content and then you have to submit your work uh, before getting into thesis. Because I've been hearing a lot of stories that people are being kicked out of colleges because they are flagged for AI detection. But I, I would say like it is up to uh, people who are consuming the information from the generative AI to validate that. Yeah, this is the summary of what we have gone through. So if anyone doesn't want to take a picture of this, you can please take it now. So this is, I think, too much to consume, I know. But this is not something we want to keep remembering every time. So this is something we can keep in our backlog of ideas and we can keep the information handy, just like Mills and Norman heuristics. We have it in our brain, but we know when to use it and how to use it, but we don't keep telling that, hey, I'm using this for this case. So it's like that. So I'm going to tell you, so anyways, no matter how many articles we see, how many people talk uh, and say that like AI is harmful, generative AI is not good enough, but we end up using ChatGPT on a daily basis. So we generate content based out of it. We are very much related on it no matter how you do it. But I'm going to tell you how you can make your content that is generated by AI or if you are a person who writes by yourself, then how to make it more professional or how to make it more authentic. And if it is generated by AI, how to make it the very same as your own. So here is a small framework that I have come up with which helps you uh, make any content that you generate through any platform your own. So let's start with the creation part. So you generate a content or you create a content by yourself. So either way it works. So then you start refining the content using any tool or like, like AI assistants. Right, so it is not about generative AI, it's more about the AI assistant. Example, I know, so I am working for Pillboard, but I joined Pillboard way before, uh, no, so I know Pillboard from way before I joining, so I love Pillboard because that's the reason I joined. I've been talking about Pillboard a bit here because I think it has a lot of features which can help us uh, in getting a lot of things done here, all in one platform. But yeah, you can create something on your own or you can create using any of the chat GPT or um, generative uh, place, uh, tools and then start refining it. So refining using an AI assistant like Quillboard that says like, hey, like fix all your grammar errors here. And see like there is a suggestion for fluency, suggestion for uh, complexity, uh, bring, bring in on the complexity and all that. It simplifies your way of communication and writing. And then you have an option to personalize. It's not an option actually, it's a step. So then we have the personalization. So it is you as a human know what a human touch is. AI never will be able to uh, find it. So if you ask your, your generative AI to write some content, it follows a specific structure and that is what gives us away in the AI detection process. So AI detectors all follow uh, and try to detect the certain patterns in a way that uh, generative AI uh, generate the content. So and personalization helps you to be, keep the content unique, change the words wherever you want, and make it more humanly possible. So, and as a human, we have this tendency of adding fillers in between unknowingly. So, if we can do that in this phase. And if you are not sure, like, hey, I'm a sounding really authentic, I'm an, I might so, sound so dumb, like, I need a very new word for this. So, you can try paraphrasing. So, you go to a paraphraser on Quillbot and paste your content and then generate something out of it. And now you have an option to. I think my screen's gone. And now you have the option to uh, make your content more refined. And uh, you have multiple options in mo most of the paraphrasing tools, like make it so creative, professional, uh, fluent, and everything. So based on your need and the type of use case that you're writing for, you can choose all of that. And after you're doing it, then you try to review it by yourself. Like one a quick proofread of everything that you have written, it should be good. Then you test it out. Put it on any of the AI detector platforms. I think Pillboard also have one. Uh, you can try that out. And you put all your content that you have written and generated and curated over there and see if it is being flagged for AI. That will help you understand like how much of uh, this content sounds more human. That will help you write content which, without any guilt, I would say, because the content is still yours and you are the owner of how you are sounding throughout this process. And if there are any corrections that are being suggested uh, from the AI detection, you can just go ahead and do the make, uh, final uh, edits and then do the final check. And there's one last optional step that is diversify. So if you really want to uh, uh, make your content like more diversified, so try using multiple tools. So when I say you generated with ChatGPT, I would say don't just 
do it with generative AI, do it with multiple other platforms. You put one paragraph from Gemini, one paragraph from uh, ChatGPT, and one from Perplexity, things like that. As long as you keep diversifying the tools that you're using in the, every stage of this process, that gives you more unique content, that keep it more authentic and making you a guilt-free writer. But how safe is this, right? So we have been talking about using the AI, generative AI, and generating the content, and again, it's not something, it's always positive. Anything that is good will always, I mean, anything that is new in the technology, it comes with both the pros and cons. So I would say like there are a lot of pros that we have to remember about using these platforms, but there are, we think that there are some things we need to keep in mind uh, while working with it. So there are, any information that we get on using these platforms is not factually correct. So there is this always the point of factual correctness that is there. You always need to make sure that you are doing that manual checking. And the risk of plagiarism. So I, the case that I was talking about, there are in a lot of colleges, like people are flagged for plagiarism and being uh, failed in the exams. So it is very likely if people are doing it. So the very same information that is given, uh, that is generated by AI is being spread out into multiple platforms. So example, if there are five people asking the same question or similar question, ChatGPT doesn't know it. It has one set of information that will give the same information to all the people. And if all the five people go and submit the paper, then all of them get <laughs> flagged for plagiarism. Things like that would happen. So it is very like, uh, very important for us, even though you're getting content from these different sources, you make it authentic by yourself by using the framework that we just talked about. And the authenticity is something it's there, everything that is generated by AI has a structure to it. It doesn't look human in any way. It is up to us to make it more human. And the sources, again, perplexity gives some level of uh, sources where it is picked from, but whereas ChatGPT doesn't. So if you're generating content from them, it is very really hard for that, uh, for us to pick the sources where it is picked from and validate it. And if there is some credential information, I think sometime back I heard the story that one of the companies shared their personal document with a ChatGPT and it is spread across to every user that ever used ChatGPT. So you have to make sure that any intellectual property is not fed to the AI because AI relies on the data we give it to us. So it doesn't have any data of its own. Anything that it shows us is being fed by someone else. So anytime you are uh, trying to share a document or a picture or anything with the AI, then it make sure that you are not sharing anything intellectual. And then data privacy, don't share personal information uh, because it's not public anymore. Yeah, as simple as that. Yes, all the pros and cons, it's very good. You use it uh, for your own benefits and there are risks that we can keep in mind but not necessarily like they are blocking us from using these platforms. So simply put, I would say that we can embrace the future with a caution because there are goods and bad about it. So yeah, I think that's all I have.